If we weren't engaging our imagination, it wouldn't be entertaining. How are we training our imagination? I'm not saying that we need to live in a cave somewhere and not engage in popular culture at all. That's not what I'm saying, guys. What I'm saying is we need, when we do engage with popular culture, with entertainment, we need to do it uh, critically. We do not need to do it unquestioningly where we just passively receive it. We need to ask these questions. What kind of lifestyle is this promoting? What kind of lifestyle is this ridiculing? What types of priorities and values are being communicated and promoted? How about this question? Where is God in this story? Now, that's a big one, guys. Don't miss this. Where is God in that story? Here's why it's big. I think one of the most subtle deceptions in our culture is that the vast majority of the stories presented in our entertainment are stories in which God plays almost no part at all. Have you noticed that? Most of the TV shows, movies, novels, the music we listen to, whatever story that song is telling, definitely the video games, it's almost as if these stories take place in a world where God doesn't exist. Or if, or if God doesn't exist, God is certainly not involved. God does not factor into the equation. Think of the TV shows and movies you've seen recently. What did God do in that story? Was God even given a role at all? No wonder we have such a difficult time being people of faith. Think about it, folks. If we are constantly immersing our imagination in stories where God is absent, don't you think it's going to be a lot more difficult for us to have faith in the presence of God when we imagine what things might be like for us next week? I've got things coming up. Am I imagining God as being part of that? If we're used to imagining stories without a God, then what role will we give God when we imagine what our own story might be like in the future? No wonder we struggle with faith. That's how we've been practicing here. We engage our imaginations in stories where God's not part of it. And then we wonder, why can't I have more faith in God? Why am I wrestling with this? Why am I wrestling? You know, the Bible, the worldview, the mindset that is presented here in Scripture is a mindset that says, you know what? Everything in life all happens under the sovereignty of God, and everything should be seen through the lens of the truth of God, of who God is, who Jesus is, what Jesus has done. That should define who we are and how we see things. At least that's what it teaches here. But we're constantly practicing with our imaginations a very different mindset. So the note sheet says, we must be careful how we train our imagination. Because we are when we're engaging in these things. Your imagination is one of the most powerful abilities that you have, and it can be used for good or it can be used for evil. How do you use your imagination? What if? What if we imagined what it, be, what it would be like to finally, really, truly, completely forgive that person? What if we imagined that? What would it be like to finally let go of that anger? What would it be like for that person to no longer have such a powerful influence over my feelings? What would it be like to finally give that thing, whatever it is, over into the hands of God and say, okay, God, they have to answer to you now. They don't have to answer to me anymore. I'm letting it go. I'm going to trust you with it. What would it be like to feel that weight finally drop off your shoulders? What would that be like? Can you imagine that? Or what if? What if we imagined what it would be like to serve someone in need? To show up at just the right moment with just the right blessing for just the right need. What if? What if we imagine what it would be like to really trust God and what it would be like to live on that basis? To not live based on fear anymore. To not be nervous and scared to death and just stressed out all the time but actually trust in God. 
what, what would that be like? <laughs> Probably a lot of fun. What if we imagine that? See, imagination can be good or it can be bad. It just depends on what we do with it. What if we thought about what God might be able to do through us as a church? What if we just let our imaginations run wild? Well, what could God do? What if? What's possible? What's possible with God? Well, all things, right? We're talking this morning about sanctification, about holiness, becoming more like Jesus, walking with God. In the process of sanctification, what kind of progress are you making? How's that going? In your struggle against sin, are you winning? What kind of mindset do you have? How have you been using your imagination on what is your mindset? I want to leave you today with this. From Philippians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul writes, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. This morning, are you willing to say, Lord Jesus, I want to use my imagination in ways that honor you. I want to stop giving the keys to my imagination over to Satan so that it's actually working against me, stealing peace from me, stealing joy from me. I want to set my mind on you and your truth. I want to live for you. And I recognize that living for you begins here with what's happening in that imagination. Can you imagine what it would be like to finally say, Lord, nothing held back. I'm yours. I'm yours. Can you imagine that? Would you stand? I'll be standing at the front along with the associate pastors. If you need to come and talk and pray with us, we'd be honored to do that for you. If you just need to come and kneel and pray at this wonderful altar space we've been provided with, we've got all sorts of room here. Maybe the Lord is leading you to become a member here at Berea Baptist Church because you feel that God is calling you to invest what He has invested in you in God's work here at Berea Baptist. And you imagine what that could be like. You're very welcome to come and join us. Whatever the Lord is saying to you, maybe He's calling to you, saying, quit pulling against me. Let me have it. Release it. Let it go. Trust yourself to me. Surrender. Can you imagine that? Let's pray.